Hi, everyone. We are joined by none other than Ryan Garcia, who will be making his comeback fight December 2nd against Oscar Duarte in Houston on the zone. Ryan, you're coming off uh, one of the most anticipated fights of the year against Javante Davis, a fight you pounded the table for. Uh, spirited performance and end up the way you But here you are coming back against Oscar Duarte, tough veteran fighter. Why did you want to be matched so tough and take such a high risk opponent in your comeback fight? I want to become a champion at 140. How can I become a champion if we're fighting, you know, guys that, you know, it's not going to prepare me for a championship fight? I expect a tough fight out of Dorte. Dorte is a tough competitor and it's a just tough fighter in general. Uh, from the looks of it, it looks like he packs a punch. So, got to be prepared for that. Mm, and, and it's gonna set me up for the future. That's why you know uh, can't can't expect to become a world champion if you're fighting guys that won't kind of have any type of threat for you. You know, you this is your first full campaign at 140. You know, the fights against Fun, Fundura, uh, I'm sorry, uh, and uh, before that, the catch uh, first full campaign. What's the mindset? Now that you're a fully fledged super lightweight, I mean the mindset uh, oh, we're just not letting up. We're just going to put a foot on, on everybody's necks and put the full, you know, foot to the pedal, full throttle because this is where I'm at. This is who I am. You know, this is me. You know, being healthy and being uh, at my best. This is how I feel. And uh, so the mindset is uh, just no compromises, giving everything we got. And really campaigning to become a world champion at 140. That's that's me and Derek's mindset. Um, he said uh, to me that I'm his last fighter. When I retire, he retires. So uh, we're, I, I plan on to go on a on a run like I, I did, you know, prior to 2020, and when I was just killing it. I, I I plan to do it again, but at 140, and then become a champion, and then run it back with Javante Davis because I'm a better fighter than that wasn't me. I uh, wasn't even committed to the sport really the way I am now. I was in LA doing whatever I wanted all the time. So now, you know, this change and, and where I'm at now in life is, is is who I am. And so that's my main focus. This that's my that's my plan. I'm gonna be world champion 140, get that rematch retained and, and beat him. And then uh and, and then you know, sky's the limit. You know, you mentioned that you were at 50% for so long recently. What stopped you from fighting at your full potential, you think? It, it, you know, it just goes back to 2020. You know, after my victory with Luke Campbell, you know, I had to take a uh, obviously a mental health break, uh, and it really caused me to stumble. Made me, made me take a lot of steps back, and uh, got involved in things that you know take away you know how your sharpness from boxing. And then when I tried to get back into it, uh, I had lost a step, and I never knew how to get it back because life was moving so fast. I felt so much pressure to get back in the ring, get back in the ring, make money, get back in the ring. And it just never let me to get my foot set and, and just get back in the gym and, and learn and remember the things that I knew what to do, what made me me. And uh, it was a hard time figuring it out, but this loss helped it because now I'm awoken and, and, and I'm so focused and I feel the fire and I feel the focus I, that I felt in 2020. You're gonna see, you're gonna see that type of fire. You're gonna see the that type of timing, that type of speed, and just everything you've seen before. You're gonna see it again. And uh, it's going to be fun, man. It's going to be magical. Can't wait for people to see, uh, see this. Uh, and I'm going to set a tone. And I'm going to set an example of Dor Dorte Halafavada. But he's going to be an example to everybody at 140. This is how I'm coming. Be prepared. This, I'm, I'm not, and I'm not letting my foot off the gas after this. I'm going to keep fighting, stay active. Whether a big fight happens or not, I got to stay active. Because that's the one thing that's crippled me. When I'm active, I I'm on fire. You've seen it before. You know, when I fight... In, like you know continuously I'm gonna only be better it's when you know I get thrown curveballs all the time with the Manny Pacquiao this Manny Pacquiao fights and, I, and then they stall me and then they make me cold like all this bullshit and then oh and then we can't fight in October and you gotta wait till this time it's just bullshit I'm tired of being you know uh, you know done like that so now I'm just gonna stay focused and, and stay consistent you know, how do you also stay hungry now that you've made this life-changing money? I believe also I don't care about the money. That's why. That's how. Money don't define me. I don't care about money. Uh, money comes and goes. Just like, you know, when you wear some underwear and then you got to change. I don't care about money. Money's nothing to me. 
it's all about just being now the best fighter I could be. I want to be a, a world champion. You know, uh, money's great. I mean, I'm blessed. I'm thankful for it. But that's not going to define me. And it's going to define me. It's how I come back from this. I could, sound, I could tell by your mindset and your demeanor, it's kind of a different Ryan Garcia. You know, we've talked so many times throughout the years. What do you think is going to be the biggest difference and surprise for fans when they see you against Oscar Duarte and the tutelage of Derek James? How badass I am. <laughs> like, damn, we forgot about this guy. We forgot about Ryan. They're going to stop disrespecting me for real. I'm being disrespected by like stupid YouTubers like Dean the Great, all these random dudes. They're just be thinking they could beat me. Like, bro, what are you talking about? You have me, you have me you box half of the use I box. I'm talking about you could beat me. I'm just tired of disrespect and people giving him like, like any lead way with that. Like, no Jake Paul could beat me. None of those Logans. I mean, I love them. They're my cool guys, but they can beat me. What are you guys talking about? Absolutely. I mean, it feels like every day it's someone new, Sean O'Malley, the list. That's, about, that's what I was talking about. That's disrespect. That's the disrespect I'm talking about. I, bro, I lost to Tank Davis, who's one of the best in the world. What the hell are you talking about? You, that, that, that got you. That got you excited? That got you thinking you, you could be crazy? No. I will literally destroy those guys. I'll, I'll bring them all at the same time. You have to get a lot of credit for going out of your way to making that fight happen, adjusting to the catch weight, agreeing to it. You really set that groundbreaking blueprint for both fighters to follow, for networks to follow. Uh, and, you know, I think you should be proud of yourself for, for pushing for that. In, in a perfect world, what are the three perfect fights for you in 2024 for you to continue on that activity that you want in these time fights? Uh, I mean, they're talking about Teofima Lopez, they're talking about the winner of Devin Haney Regis, and talking about a couple other dudes. Like I said, I'm doing everything that prepared me to become a world champion. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know who that is against. I don't know. You know I don't know if it will be Rollies. I, I don't know. I have no clue. But what I do know is I'm going to do what I got to do to become a champion. I'm not worried about people anymore. I did, I did that. I sacrificed everything. I suffered for the people already. But next, now I'm coming back for me. I'm coming back to become the champion, and I'm moving at my pace, however I want to do it. They need me. Remember that. Tank Davis did 150k buys before he fought me. Then he got 1.2 million. That should tell you something. They need me. That's why Sean O'Malley's calling me out. That's why Tafimo went and messaged me, calling me out. That's why Devin Haney messaged me, calling me out. Because I'm the guy. It's just what it is. I'm the guy that you need me to make a big fight. So I'm going to move at my pace. I'm going to do what I do. And that's you have shitty pay-per-view numbers because you're going to pay every fight on pay-per-view because you think you're a pay-per-view star, but it doesn't work like that. The new blueprint, you got to fight a guy that could make – you need a dance partner. Can't – you? I mean, unless you're Michael Jackson or, you know, I don't even know if Michael Jackson can sell fudge. <laughs> I just – he probably can. But the thing is, like, you got to have a dance partner. That's the key, man. So for me, I, I will always be honest with my fans and be like, I'm not putting that fight on pay-per-view. I didn't put this fight on pay-per-view. Why would I? Most people would be like, bro, you just did a big paper. Why don't you do another pay-per-view? Because that's dumb. Because that's robbing the fans. Why would I? This is not a high, like, it is a high fight. Like, this guy's good, but only to the boxing fans. Nobody knows him. I can't go around the street and be like, you don't know who, you know who Oscar Norda is? No. Why would I put that on pay per view? Now I'll put a Devin Andy fight on pay per view. I'll put a Tefima Lopez fight on pay per view. A Rollies fight on pay per view. An Isaac Cruz. But why would I put these guys on pay per view? It makes no sense. It's a new blueprint. New blueprint. And that blueprint that you talked about, obviously, the Zone and Golden Boy need to be on the same page as well, too. It, is that the agreement that you will get the fight you want moving forward? I don't know. I, I really haven't talked to Golden Boy too much, to be honest. I haven't talked to anybody. This is just what I'm going to do. I don't know what – I don't really conversate with them at all. Mm -hmm. What's been the hardest part of the Tank Davis loss, you think? Uh, the hardest thing is just knowing that, like, that wasn't my best and everybody having that opinion in the back of their mind, like, damn, he got hit to a body. Like, he sucks. Like, just knowing that people are thinking that pisses me off a little bit. But again, you know, that's part of the game. I lost. I have to take it. You know, it is what it is. And I accepted that fight under those circumstances. 
you know, and, and that's that's what it is. I gotta live with that. But uh, being in this business and it's fun. Yeah, everybody thinks that, and I, I, I'm just sitting back, like training hard as shit, and just in in my mind, I can go into a different mode. Like I kind of like this position, being able to prove myself. It kind of makes me feel like I'm young again. Like oh, I'm about to, I am young actually, you know? uh, but like when I was, you know coming up from like 18 to 22, you know, when I was on that rampage, I feel that same vibe. Mm -hmm. I saw the camera pan out there a little bit. What does that say on your shirt? Oh, this is just, uh, what is this? Oh, this is, is in, 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 in riches. It's a brand. It's, I think it's a French brand. Now, Chuck, I know you're always styling out deals with Dolce and Gabbana and so on. Yeah. Uh, yes. But obviously you're, you're, you're focused on your fighting. What are you focused on fixing with Derek James? What is he working on with you? He started uh, in the beginning of the camp, just all technique. Everything was technique, 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 cleaning up little uh, little things I do, and then uh, footwork and, and uh, just the basics, the fundamentals. And then from now, we're opening it up, and now things are free flowing and things are moving now. Everything's combined. And now, you know, we're at. We're, we're at, I feel the best I've felt since 2020, but plus I'm sharp, I've sharpened up some rough edges. Like it couldn't be better right now. Literally, it couldn't be better. And we're doing a great job. And and really what's different is also my commitment and my dedication to the sport. So those all those things combined, you know, with Derek's teaching, my commitment, my focus, it's gonna nothing bad can happen out of that. You know, from from the outside looking in, uh, I feel like a lot of people always question your dedication, your commitment. Everyone from Canelo down to, you know, uh, other fighters and people on social media. Why do you think that is the case? Why do you think you have that rep? Look at me. I look good. That's the only reason. I look good. I mean, what, what other reason? Uh, if I was an ugly dude, they're going to think I'm working my ass off. <laughs> like, damn, yeah, I mean, looking ugly because it's training all the time. I look good, so like, how can he be training all the time? Like, you know, look at him. That's probably what it is. Honestly, I don't know. Like, I don't even think about people like that. Like, I don't ever think about, oh man, he must not be dedicated. Uh, how how would I know? How how you know if I'm not dedicated? I don't train hard. <laughs> the fuck, you don't. You can't. Like, that's just not a thing to like be able to read. <laughs> you can't read that. <laughs> I mean, if I was, like, super out of shape, maybe, I would say that, like, yeah, not dedicated. I'm always, I'm always knotted up talking about how, how do I get there? I'm Mexican. I don't, I'm not born with abs. I don't work with this. If that don't work, I got, I got to do ab workouts every day and eat clean. No, no tortillas for me. That's fucked up. I don't get no kind of stuff. Well, they, they say, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> You always been shape. I don't think. I never miss weight. I've grinded my ass off to get to the worst weight classes you can think of. You can't make one thirty six without making working your ass off. I tell you that. So I had to. I had to figure it out. Even unhealthy, I have to do this dehydrate. Imagine having to cut weight and not being able to drink water either. <laughs> That's hard. That's dedication. So I earned my shit. I'm tired of people disrespecting me. I earned it. I've been boxing since I was seven years old and working with my dad every single day and grinding to get here. I'm tired of that. Don't tell me I'm not dedicated. Oh, fuck you, you're not dedicated. So that tank fight will take place at 140? Is that the only way you would take the rematch? He will never fight me, I don't think, at 140. This guy will never fight anybody at a fair thing. He just won't. He just won't. He literally won't. He won't chance it. He won't chance it because he don't have that dog. You know, he don't really have that. He don't have that spirit of, of, of like the old school fighters. He doesn't. But I don't care. He's going to have to come to me. Want to know why? Because he can't sell pay-per-view. That's why Sean O'Malley can't fight him. That's why UFC said, no, he's not a star. Brian brought all the pay-per-views. He, he can't be a star if he's doing 150K box. <laughs> How can he be a star? I popped him up. Remember that. I gave him some stardom. Now he's popping but like I said, you have to have two fighters to tank up. So if he thinks he's gonna come back and fight some random dude and do a big pay per view, he's not. But we'll see what he does. I mean, I don't know who he plans to fight. Um, but again, 
they're all gonna they're all gonna need me at the end of the day. That's just facts. You know, I'm gonna I, I can set up I can I can make way more bigger fights than him than he can make by himself. So he's gonna have to see me for the money because he likes money. He said he's you know I look he should be thanking me. I just blessed him around thirty million dollars. He should be like, damn, all right, you're a good guy. You know, but he always, you know, poking jabs, talking shit on Twitter a little bit still. Okay, because he knows that wasn't me. That's why he's still popping them. We didn't really run it. That wasn't really a fight. It was that was a half a man versus a dude that wasn't really even when he dropped me, he didn't really want to engage either, to be honest. Where was he engaging even after he dropped? Me? He didn't even try to come after. Mm -hmm. With it's arguably Canelo's the best paper. View star uh, still in boxing. Do you consider yourself the next top paper star in the sport? Yeah, world? for sure. And I think Canelo said himself too. Like Ryan has the potential to become the next, the next one, next pay per view star. Uh, I just gotta keep on being strategic. Don't let up. Stick to the blueprint that I know is gonna work. Uh, and, and be confident that Canelo is a global superstar. And you know he could he could do whatever he wants. You know he has his own his own ways and. You know, I, I, what, what can I say? He's done everything in the sport, and, and he's doing really good. He fought really well against Jamal. He looked like he was back to himself. So, yeah, I just tip off my hat to Canelo, and uh, hope he's still, you know, all good. Uh, would, would you guys consider you prepared that relationship at this point? Would you consider ever working with Canelo again? Um, you know, business or whatever he wants to do, for sure. You know, I... Uh, we we definitely are cool now. And, you know, I've talked to Eddie, and you know, everything's all squashed, and I got no hard feelings for them. You know, I spent a lot of time in that gym, and we had a lot of great memories. And you know, it, it's sad to think about sometimes because of all the fun times we had. But that's how life is, man. Uh, you get new chapters. You got to go yeah. through it. Yeah. So, but um, I'm I'm so happy for for Canelo. Um, and, and I want him to, you know, keep dominating, keep being the champion that, you know, I've seen in the gym every day. Uh, and, yeah, I'm happy for him. Yeah, credit to you. I mean, you always take the high road. I think you even had his last fight with Jermel, too, sitting ringside. Uh, you always have always great things to say about him. Um, with that said, though, let's go back to the fight with Oscar Duarte. Why is this must-see TV for the fans? What, what, what do you have promised in store? You're going to about see me. That's why That's why it's must-see TV. Look at look it. <laughs> I'm going to give you a great show. Um, it, it's going to be it's gonna be fun because this guy's a threat. He's dangerous. Uh, so the people that don't like me, you never know. You never know. Wait for that one punch. Uh, and then for the people that love me, you're about to see a domination. A domination of just me being me and um, – and being just the Ryan that you see, you know, all those years.